Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to, of course, none other than your girl cooking with Tammy. I am back with another great recipe. Today, I'm gonna show you how I make my delicious stuffed bell peppers. When I tell you the flavors in these stuffed bell peppers are gonna be everything, this recipe is gonna be epic. So with all of that being said, let's introduce these ingredients and get started. First up is our ground beef. This recipe is versatile. So if you wanna use ground, whatever it is that you prefer, you definitely can. We also have a colorful trio of bell peppers. We have red, orange, and yellow. Of course, if you have green, you can use that as well. And we also have some finely chopped fresh garlic, diced onions, green onions, AKA scallions, and we have some brown sugar. I'll tell you how we're gonna tie that in later. As far as our dry seasonings, we have Italian seasoning, chili powder, paprika, Creole seasoning, onion powder, adobo, ground black pepper, salt, beef bouillon, cilantro paste, basil paste, and Worcestershire sauce. So with all of that being said, let's get to cooking. First thing we're gonna do is we are gonna wash and clean our bell peppers really good. Pat those bad boys dry. Try to place them to stand up. If they're not standing up fully, this is what you're gonna do. We're gonna level it out just a bit by going in there with a sharp knife and just taking off a little bit off the bottom. Place it to stand up. Once it stands up, then we're good to go. We're also going to go in and remove the top of the bell pepper. Just like that. Don't discard it just yet. And using a sharp knife, we're going to separate the membranes from the bell pepper. Just like this. Of course, toss the seeds, get rid of that part. But the other stuff, we're going to be keeping. Place that bell pepper down. Repeat the same process. And before you know it, we are done and ready to go. Using the tops and the bottoms of the bell pepper that we just cut off, dice those bell peppers on up. Of course, they don't have to be perfect. Once we're done, we're gonna add it to a bowl and reserve it for later. In the meanwhile, we're gonna place our bell peppers into a casserole dish and place it into our 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 15 minutes to soften up the bell peppers just a bit. Now that that's done, moving on to the stovetop. To a hot skillet, we're gonna add a small drizzle of oil to saute our veggies. We're gonna add our onions, along with our bell peppers. Twist it around, twist it around just a bit. Allow our onions and veggies to become slightly softened. We're also gonna go in there and add our green onions to the mix. After about 30 seconds, we're gonna add our finely chopped garlic. And we're also gonna give that a quick mix, make sure everything is well combined. And we're gonna do this until the garlic is nice and fragrant. Once the garlic becomes fragrant, we're gonna hit it off with a little seasoning, salt, not too much, as well as ground black pepper. And for the fun part, we're gonna push our veggies to the side and we're gonna add our ground beef to the pan. Break it on up. And we're gonna allow the meat to become nice and brown. At this point in time, we're gonna combine our veggies with the meat Usually if I'm using a meat with a very small fat content, whether it be turkey, chicken, or even beef, maybe like an 80-20 as far as 80% lean, 20% fat, and there's no need to drain the oil off, I like to go in there and just season it one up. Even if the meat is still raw, just season it one up. But because I'm using beef that has a higher fat content, it doesn't make sense to season it up just yet, if that makes sense, because we're gonna be draining all of this fat off. And what's gonna happen is we are gonna be losing all of our seasonings. So we don't want that to happen. Now that the meat is all seared on up, perfectly brown and cooked all the way through, we're gonna go over to the sink, strain this meat off, get rid of all of that excess oil, and once we're done, we're gonna bring it back to the stovetop, re-add it to the pan, and it's time to get the seasoning. First thing we're gonna hit this meat off with is some salt and freshly cracked black pepper, along with some adobo. Yes, add that adobo. It's gonna give it a really nice flavor. Onion powder. Creole seasoning, of course. Paprika, it doesn't have to be smoked. I'm using regular. 
And we're gonna add in some chili powder. However, chili powder, as you know, is spicy. So add as much or as little as you want to. Combine all of the seasonings with the meat. For that extra added flavor, we're gonna add a small pinch of beef bouillon. And of course, we're gonna hit it with the saucy sauce. So we're gonna add some Worcestershire sauce. Yes, we are. We haven't even added everything to the pan and the aroma right now, OMG, it smells so good. So you know that if it smells this good, it's gonna taste even better. Am I right or am I right? It's gonna be so delicious. We're gonna go in with about a cup of your favorite brand of tomato sauce. Yes, you're gonna add that saucy sauce. To take it up a couple notches, we're also gonna add some basil paste. Now, if you don't have basil paste, of course, you can get some fresh basil, chop it one up, or you could even use some dry basil. If you don't have it, don't go crazy, just don't add it. We're also gonna add some cilantro paste. Same thing, if you don't have the paste, you can use dried or fresh cilantro. Mix it one up and combine it really good. And at this time, we're gonna add our brown sugar. Now, let me tell you why we're adding the brown sugar. We want to neutralize any acidity from the tomatoes that may be in the saucy sauce, all right? So adding the brown sugar is just to balance it out a bit. And of course, it's not gonna make our meat mixture taste sweet by any means. I'm gonna go on with about two cups of rice to this one pound of meat. And we're gonna combine it really good. We're not gonna chop it one up, but we're just gonna fold it one in. Make sure the rice is well combined. If you don't have any boiled rice on hand, or if you didn't boil the rice prior to making the meat mixture, you can always add the raw rice to the meat mixture. However, if you're adding a cup of rice, be sure to add two cups of liquid, whether it be beef broth or chicken broth, or even water. But I find it a lot easier to boil the rice while the meat mixture is cooking, because guess what? To boil rice, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the type of rice that you use. And to make this meat mixture, it takes about 20 to 25 minutes. So hey, why not, right? At this point in time, give it a quick taste. If you need to add other seasonings, whether it be adobo, maybe a little bit more onion powder, salt, ground black pepper, do your thing. Now that we're done, we're gonna hit it off with some cheese. Add your favorite brand of cheese, whether it be Mexican, cheddar, Parmesan, whatever you prefer is what you're gonna add. Just in case you're inquiring, I'm adding cheddar cheese to this mix along with a little Mexican cheese. I have some extra cheese slices left over. I'm gonna add it. And this is Colby cheese, by the way. Cover it down at this point, turn the stove top off, allow that steam to melt the cheese. I'm gonna stir it all in there, get it nice and cheesy, nice and gooey. And in the meanwhile, we are gonna check on our bell peppers. My bell peppers has been in the oven at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes, and this is the perfect texture right here. And we're gonna start with stuffing our bell peppers. We're gonna take some of that delicious meaty rice mixture. We're gonna add it to our bell peppers, followed by a layer of cheese, of course. Wouldn't be cooking with Tammy if you don't add the cheese. Once we're done, we're gonna go in once again with our rice and meat mixture, add it to the bell pepper, Top it off with a little bit more cheese. Get some more rice, add it on top. And once it's nice and filled, add some more of that cheesy meaty rice mixture. We're gonna do the same thing for the other bell peppers, starting off with the meaty cheesy rice mixture, followed by some more cheese, please. And we're just gonna do the same thing throughout. After we've added our cheese to garnish our stuffed bell peppers and make it look even more appetizing, we can go in there with either some Herbs de Provence dried seasoning, maybe a little dried basil, dried parsley, whichever one you may have on hand. Just sprinkle it on top and we're gonna place it into our 350 degree oven. It should take about 25 to 30 minutes to cook these bell peppers perfectly. And let's see, our bell peppers are finished. 
we're going to slice into it. And check it out, check it out. Absolutely gorgeous. And I know you guys see that layer of cheese right there just oozing out nice and gooey. And I know your mouth at this point in time is salivating. So we're going to do a taste test, all right, and see exactly what it tastes like. This is it right here. Talk about seasoned to perfection. The bell peppers have the perfect texture. OMG. They are not too soft, but yet not hard. They have that. It just It's just that in-between texture. And they're cooked perfectly. Not to mention the complimentary cheese that we added. The flavors are epic. Absolutely a winner. Definitely give this recipe a try. Hit me up in the comment section and let me know that you tried it. And tell me what you think about it. And as always... I'll catch you in another video. Talk to you later. Bye, guys.